again, you might be right, but I don't see how you can say that everything we say is right and everything the Russians say is a lie. Well, that's exactly what you just said. That's not what I said. I said I would say that we are not two credible, equally credible uh, parties when it comes to what we say publicly about the conflict in Ukraine. And your argument would be that the U.S. is more credible than the Russians are. I'm not even signifying that that question with a response. Well, I mean, you. Larry, did you see that impression? But we're more credible. Yes, we don't put out mass amounts of propaganda. What did she just say? Now, contrary to that little fib that was told by the Defense Department spokesperson, the government pumps out plenty of propaganda, and they always have. Here are just a few examples. We know with confidence, with confidence, that the Ukrainians did not have such a system anywhere near the vicinity at that point in time. So it obviously points a very clear finger at the separatists. In the days following the Malaysian Flight 17 attack, the Russian government released satellite photos that showed locations of Ukrainian Buke anti-aircraft missiles, and they also presented documentation that a Ukrainian fighter jet rapidly approached the Malaysian airline prior to its downing. Posted on YouTube by the Ukrainian Well, is there government. anything, okay, is there anything other, because, you know, I can so, keep going so, if you, well, you want to Well, is there stuff that's in. other than social media that Yes, that absolutely, there okay, is. so what is it that's other than social media? At this media? point... Now, when their YouTube and social media proof weren't enough to launch World War III, the U.S. government was forced to concede that Russia was not directly involved in shooting down the plane, nor could they prove that those anti-aircraft missiles came from Russia. Now, just like it wouldn't have made much political sense for Russia to shoot down a commercial airliner, it wouldn't have made much sense for the Assad regime to release chemical weapons the very day that a U.N. team had entered the country to research such claims. But that didn't stop Secretary of State John Kerry from once again repeating endlessly and often baseless claims. The Assad regime, and only undeniably the Assad regime, unleashed an outrageous chemical attack against its own citizens. And once again, Kerry was not able to back up these claims with evidence And in fact, Syrian rebels actually admitted responsibility for the chemical weapons attack. Yes, those same Syrian rebels the U.S. government had been secretly aiding militarily. And the White House promised more direct military support is on the way, but aides would not disclose the specifics of the arms the U.S. is sending. The MIT report Kerry cited as irrefutable proof that the Assad regime used chemical weapons actually showed that Based on the range of the rocket that delivered sarin, it was too short for the device to have been fired from the Syrian government positions. And who can forget the package of lies delivered to the world about Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction? Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass death. The government exploited the collective energy surrounding 9-11 to shift focus off of Osama bin Laden and onto Saddam Hussein, who had nothing to do with 9-11. Here's what President George W. Bush had to say just six months after 9-11 about the war on terror's most wanted. So I, I don't know where he is, nor do I, you know, I just don't spend that much time on him, I'll be honest with you. I- now perhaps Bush just didn't want anyone to start questioning all the anomalies surrounding 9-11, just one of many being the uh, invisible plane that hit the Pentagon. An eyewitness who said it appeared that that Boeing 757, the American jet, American Airlines jet landed short of the Pentagon. Can you give us any better idea of how much of the plane actually impacted the building? You know, it, it, it might have appeared that way, but from my close-up inspection, uh, there's no evidence of a plane having crashed anywhere near the Pentagon. And remember those anthrax attacks following 9-11? Just one week before passage of the Patriot Act, Letters containing anthrax spores were mailed to several news media offices and to two key Democratic U.S. senators who were coincidentally stalling the Patriot Act's passage. The letters seemed to have scared them and the rest of Congress into passing the Patriot Act without even reading it. Muslim terrorists were quickly ruled out after investigations proved that the letters contained a specific type of weaponized anthrax that could have only been made by a United States military lab. But that didn't stop Colin Powell from exploiting the attack. Less than a teaspoonful of dry anthrax in an envelope shut down the United States Senate in the fall of 2001. Iraq declared 8,500 liters of anthrax. 
Powell's move was a pivotal moment that scared America right into another war with Iraq. But let's not forget about the other huge lie the government peddled to get us into the first Gulf War. They took the babies out of the incubators. Took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. That was Nurse Nayira, whose tearful testimony swung the pendulum in favor of war. After the vote was safely passed, Nayira, the daughter of the Kuwaiti ambassador to Washington, admitted to making the whole story up. Then there's the 1964 Gulf of Tonkin incident. President Lyndon B. Johnson lied to the American public and Congress in order to escalate the war in Vietnam. In his speech to the American people, Johnson blatantly lied when he declared that North Vietnam attacked U.S. vessels on the high seas. A Congress quickly passed the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, escalating the war in Vietnam. By 1969, over 500,000 troops were fighting in Southeast Asia. Johnson and his Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara, had bamboozled Congress and the American people. In fact, North Vietnam had not attacked the USS Maddox, as the Pentagon claimed. And Johnson later admitted, for all I know, our Navy was shooting at whales out there. And here's another, just trust us, that went bust. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. What I can say unequivocally is that if you are a U.S. person, the NSA cannot listen to your telephone calls, and the NSA cannot target your emails. And have not. And have not. They cannot and have not. Then there's this lie of the year. You can keep your plan if you are satisfied with it. If you like the plan you have, you can keep it. If you like your plan and you like your doctor, you won't have to do a thing. You keep your plan. If you've got health insurance, you can keep it. If you like your health care plan, you will keep your plan. You can keep your doctor. You can keep your plan. If you like your doctor or health care plan, you can keep it. What we said was you could keep it if it hasn't changed since the laws passed. Then there's the big whopper rolled up into the Benghazi scandal. What happened in Benghazi was, in fact, initially a spontaneous uh, reaction to what had just transpired hours before in Cairo. However, U.S. military personnel knew early on that the Benghazi attack was a hostile action and not a result of a spontaneous protest triggered by an anti-Muslim video. What difference at this point does it make? Two years later, smoking gun emails were released, proving the administration worked immediately trying to spin the attack as something other than their own strategic failures. So the list goes on and on. We're definitely witnessing a pattern here. And the government might think that they can just keep on playing the same trick over and over again, and the American people and the world will never wake up and realize what they're doing. But the problem with that is that the internet is forever. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Why don't you eat up and we'll tell you.